Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about wound drainage, also known as Exudate. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and please leave a comment down below. I really like to see them and read them. It really means a lot to me and I do try to respond as many as I can. And then also check out ninjanerd.org. That's where we have all of our notes and illustrations for all the lectures we put up here. All right, let's get started here on wound drainage. It's going to be a really quick, simple, easy video. So the different types of drainage we have four. We have sanguinous, serosanguinous, serous, and purulent. And when you're looking at the colors up here, I tried to make it look like what they are. So when we talk about sanguinous, sanguinous is typically your bright red, okay? So it's gonna be your bright red drainage that's coming from all different types of wounds. Typically, this is gonna be the initial because it's gonna be blood that's coming out of the wound. So it's gonna be a fresh wound, potentially, or a wound that maybe has just been debrided, so it's been reopened and recleaned, and then we're gonna have some opening and freshness. So sanguinous, when we look at this, is red, okay? Um, and this might be weird for some people, but the way I remember it is like, I think of like a chicken sandwich and I always put ketchup on a chicken sandwich. So sanguineness is my bright red ketchup looking type of, so anything that's bright red and um, bloody. And then when we go to serosanguineous, serosanguineous is gonna be our mixture here of that clear, it can also be red, right? It's gonna be a mixture. And this is gonna be some that's gonna be um, a little more runny, right? It's gonna be a little more um, drippy from the wound rather than the blood. It's gonna have a little more um, fluidity to it. So when we're looking at serosanguinous, we're looking at things of this clear and also this red. So this is showing us to, that maybe there is some proteins that are coming to the area, right? that are gonna help heal the wound and help clear, clear the wound out. And it's also gonna help us show that there's maybe some white blood cells that are coming there as well. Just to be active in the area, they are active and alive, they are not dead, okay? Then we go down to the serous, and the serous is just the clear, right? So the serous fluid is things that we wanna see. This means we have a healthy wound. It's gonna have some proteins in it as well, right? Um, it's clear because there also could be some plasma in the area as well. And this is ideally what we wanna see. We wanna see a, a gradient from a wound that has gone from sanguinous to serosanguinous to serous. And you're gonna look at these words also and just note that we have seros, right? Which is sero here. And that's going to be our clear portion. And then we have the sanguinous, which is sanguinous here, which is red. So it makes sense that sanguinous is the red, serous is the clear, and then serosanguinous is a mixture of the red and the clear, okay? And then we're gonna go on to purulent. And purulent is the pus, right? The greenish yellow. And what we're looking at here is bacteria that's potentially in the wound, right? So we're gonna have these dead or ineffective white blood cells, right? We're gonna have bacteria. And our body's essentially trying to get rid of all the gunk within there. So we don't have even more of an infection, but this is indicating that there is some sort of infection that is potentially brewing. So I hope that clears up the different types of drainage. Let's talk about how we assess the drainage and document it as well. Now we're gonna talk about the different ways that we can assess the drainage. So when we are assessing a wound, it's really important for us to be documenting everything that's going on with that wound because we wanna make sure that through our shift, there is consistency through the wound and then we're able to note changes. That's the most important thing that we're looking for when we're assessing a wound and assessing the drainage is the changes. We wanna make sure that the changes are going in favorable approaches for our patient and things that are getting better rather than things are gonna become detrimental or worse for our patient. So when we're assessing the drainage, what we're looking at here is first color, which we just covered, right? The types of different drainage, but also the color because we want to remember that with types of drainage, there's also a gradient between all those, right? There could be some green, there could be some, you know, purulent, there could be some serous, there could be always a mixture. This is just to clarify that there's names for those different types of drainage. But when we go through the color, we're noting it, we're gonna note the color, you can even put the type, right? but you can also note the color. Is it gonna be this bright red? Is it a mixture? Is it clear? Is it uh, green? And when we're noting the color, we can also indicate that um, there's a mixture, right? So is there a type? Is there the color? What kind of color? So we wanna document the color. 
And then we also want to put if there's a mixture or anything else that's going on. And then is there a color that maybe is not something we want to see in a wound or something that's healing, like black, right, necrosis, something that's occurring that's not going to be favorable for our patient. We can also then look at consistency of the drainage, right? This is something else to note. Um, is it runny or thicker, right? Is it becoming sticky? And it's important to think about the consistency because that's going to tell us, uh, especially with the thickness, that if we have a thicker type of drainage, it's going to show us that there's probably a lot of protein within that. And when there's a decreased um, thickness or the thickness is really thin, it's really runny, then there's a decrease in the protein. So consistency plays an important part just to note, um, especially with if it happens really quick. You go into your patient's room with being the shift, it's really runny, like they kind of, you can't keep enough gauze pads on it, you're changing the wound, and all of a sudden it goes from that to being really, really thick and not draining as much. That's something to note, right? Something to document. Now, when we talk about amount, we want to make sure that we are aware of what um, policies and procedures are in place for documenting amount within our facility. So amount can be very subjective, meaning that my idea of moderate could be different than your idea of moderate. And what we're looking at here is to get as consistent as we can. So what we can do is just to weigh the dressing, um, noting what kind of dressing you have on the patient, and then being able to weigh it will give us the amount, right, of um, drainage that has come out within a time period. So not only is it important to know when the last dressing was done, right, time and date, but also how often it's being done and then the type of dressing we have, we can then also accurately or get as close as to accurate as we can the amount of drainage that's coming out of that wound. And then the last is odor. There really shouldn't be too much of an odor, right, from the uh, drainage site, but if there is, that could indicate to us some type of infection. Right, is there some type of bacteria that's going on in there? And when we do have a chance or an, an opportunity to unfortunately smell some type of odor from any type of wound, it also could be that the dressing has not been changed as often as it should, right? So it's holding on that moist, dark atmosphere that all bacteria likes to grow in. It's keeping it on that wound really, really close to that wound opening. And then it's allowing for that um, infection to grow really, really quickly. So we want to think about dressing changes, right? Is it a stale dressing? All right, and that's it, Ninja Nerds. That is the video here on wound drainage and assessing wound drainage. So I hope you learned something from it. Really quick, really good refresher for you guys to get ready for the NCLEX and out there in the field. And as always, until next time. Thank you.